الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الأنعام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا معشر الجن والإنس ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يقصون عليكم آياتي وينظرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا شهدنا على أنفسنا وغرتهم الحياة الدنيا وشهدوا على أنفسهم أنهم كانوا كافرين ذلك أن لم يكن ربك مهلك القرى بظلم وأهلها غافلون ولكل درجات مما عملوا وما ربك بغافل عما يعملون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجه يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are beginning with a very important ayah of the Quran regarding its basic philosophy. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-ins. O assembly of the jinnis and the humans. Alam yaatikum rasulun minkum. Didn't come to you. Our messengers from amongst yourselves, ya kusura alaykum ayati, relating to you our ayat, our revelations. Wa yunziru na kum lika yau me kum haza, and warning you about the meeting of this day of yours. Kalu shahid na ala anfusina. They will say yes. We testify against our own selves. وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا And they had been deceived by the life of the world. وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Again, and they will be the witnesses against their own selves. أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ That they had been unbelievers. Now why this bracketing of jinnis and humans in this ayah? In the Quran, There are only a very few ayat in which these two creatures, you know, they are grouped together and addressed together. Although we find in Surah Al-Rahman that about thirty-three times it is repeated, "For be aye alai Rabbi kumatu kazeban." Here again, you know, repeatedly Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is asking a question from the jinnis as well as the humans. But addressing them together, positively, asking them something to do, it's very seldom in the Quran. Mostly, Quran addresses human beings. Now, what is common here between the jinns and the humans that they are bracketed here together? Let it be known that of all the creatures of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, there are only three key creations. Who have self-consciousness? Although the innumerable forms of life on this planet, whether they are on the land or in the sea, they have consciousness. Animals have consciousness, but the self-consciousness, consciousness of his or your own ego, which we denote I, I am. This self-consciousness is shared only by three creatures of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala: the angels, the jinns, and the humans. Out of these three, 
the angels are a part and parcel of the unseen therefore there is no question of any testing or trial they see the heavens with their eyes they see the hell so there is no question of any testing or trial now these two jinns and the humans they are tried here in their lives whether they believe in the unseen or not this is the basic test that is why you find in the quran you know in the absolute beginning you know hudal lil muttaqin allazina yu'minuna bil ghaib this is the first examination to which both of these have been put they have to believe in allah although they can't see it they have to believe in paradise and hell although they can't see it they have to believe in angels although they can't see them so all this unseen world to believe in them through their intellects through their understanding through their hearts that is the first test and let me quote here a saying of confucius a very big chinese saint and sage one of the biggest sages and saints of the human history a very beautiful sentence of his is there is nothing more certain there is nothing nothing more real than what cannot be seen and there is nothing more certain than what cannot be heard you know this the realities real realities they lie beyond our senses and our perceptions so this is the first step towards philosophy wisdom and this is the first step towards guidance you menuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna salata wa bima razaqnahum yanfaqun ya mashal jinn wal insa lam yatikum rusulun minkum yaqussuna alaykum ayati wa yunzirunakum liqa yawmikum hadha qalu shahidna ala anfusina wa gharatum al hayat al dunya but they were engrossed they were lost in this worldly life the pleasures comforts amenities of this world they deluded them they keep them involved in them all the time never having a time to think about the creation who created me who am i where from i have come where i am heading towards what is the end is this is the only life from birth till death or something beyond it zalika now what is this zalika why these messengers had been sent zalika 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 lam yakul rabbuka muhlikal qura this is because your lord was not going to destroy the townships and cities you know that he destroyed be zulmin wrongfully and you know the people in a state when the people were not warned already warned before Allah destroyed the nation but after warning he sent the messengers he sent no and he kept on warning his people for more than 900 years 950 years as it is given you know in surah al-ankabut he kept on warning but even then if people didn't heed to him pay any heed to him but they they were doomed so they were warned allah subhanahu wa taala is not unjust that would, he would have destroyed them without warning wa likullin darajatun mimma amil and for every one are the ranks all of you are ranks based upon wa likullin darajatun mimma amilu your deeds your actions not your amani not your wishful thinking laysa bi amaniyakum wala amani ahli alkitab you have to prove your worth through your deeds and actions wa ma rabbuka bighafilin amma ya'malun and your lord is not unaware of what they are doing 